Hello, my name is Mark Watson. What we're going to do today is we're going to do the best practices, a secure installation of a Fedora 28 workstation. We're going to start out with downloading the ISO image, then we're going to write the ISO image to a USB drive with Fedora Media Writer. Then I'm going to go over the ideal setup for uh, Lux encrypted logical volume configuration, and then we're going to do a FIDO U2F authentication with YubiKey generated one-time passwords for X Windows login and the last thing we're going to do today is we're going to temporarily disable kernel user page table isolation that's that Spectre and Meltdown patch for computationally intensive tasks okay one of the first things you're going to need to do is order a couple YubiKeys off of Amazon then you're going to need to download the ISO image from the closest mirror then we're going to use Fedora Media Writer to write the image to a USB drive. We're just going to pick our Fedora ISO, then we're going to click Write It to Disk, and then they got to auth it requires root permission or super user permission, so we'll write it to the uh, USB drive. And then this process usually takes a couple minutes, but uh, I'm going to speed it up here a little bit. And next thing you know, we're ready to go. Okay, once you've got your USB drive created, you're going to need to boot to it. You can usually do that by when you power on your computer by pressing either the F2 key or the F12 key. What that'll kick you over into is a basically a bio selection and you'll be able to select your YouTube your USB drive to boot from okay we have booted into Fedora 28 workstation we're gonna begin the install right now it's just booting up we'll just hit install to the hard drive we're gonna set the English United States keyboard continue then we need to set the date and time we're gonna set it over to Chicago because we're in the central time zone Then this is the most important part. We're going to set up the hard drive on basically how we're going to set up this hard drive is like we set up earlier. I'm going to create an EFI partition. It's going to be uh, 200 megabytes. There's not going to be, well, there is going to be a mount point. What we're going to do is we're going to mount it at boot slash EFI. Now we need to create our boot partition. It's going to be about 500 megabytes. Need to change this over to megabytes. All right, I messed that up. Should have put the megabytes, then put 500. Now we got it at 500, and we'll put the label as local dash boot. Dag it. Oh no, it's not a VG, so we'll just put it label as boot, and then the mount point boot. Now we're going to create our swap partition. It's going to be four gigabytes. Actually, this is actually a this is a kind of a YouTube trick. I'm actually installing it on a virtual machine so I could show you guys how to do this. That's my little secret. We're going to create a... Alright, we just created the... the uh, 
Volume Group, local. I usually do the local volume group to know exactly where the, the storage space is located. Now we're going to create the root partition. It's going to be 30 gigs. We're going to label it local dash dash root. And of course our mount, mount point is just slash. Now we got to type in a passphrase for this uh, root logical volume. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the same passphrase for both of them. So it doesn't, doesn't ask me for two passphrases just to boot up my computer. We're going to put this last bit of space out there as the home drive. Remember, this is a virtual machine, so I could actually capture the video of how to do this. Mine is actually a little bit different than this. Again, I'm going to use the same passphrase as I did on my root logical volume. It's going to save a little time on the, each boot. Alright, we're ready to start start the installation process. We're going to accept the changes. I'm going to speed this up substantially. It's We're not going to sit here and watch this thing install. I basically cut, cut out a lot of the dead spots. Okay, just got done creating all the uh, logical volumes. Now we're fixing to overlay the uh, operating system on the file system. Okay, that was quick. Yours is going to go a lot slower than that. Now we're going to shut it down and we're going to reboot it for the first time. As you can see, we've got a login to decrypt the hard drives. I'm going to go in and type that passphrase in. Okay, it's saying welcome. You know, we're gonna do we're gonna set this up later. Uh, I'm gonna set that up later as well. Okay, we're gonna set in uh, I usually just type in my name and then uh for security sake, I'm just going to leave the username that they select. Remember, this is a virtual machine. Okay, we're going to set my password. I usually set something really simple because we're going to use uh, the YubiKey one-time generated passwords as well.
Okay, let's go ahead and log in. Okay, I'm going to type in my really simple password. One of the first things that I like to do is I like to actually set the root the root password. Reason why is I like to go over to root to edit a few files. That way I'm not typing in sudo every time. So we're gonna do a sudo password and then we're gonna type in root and we're gonna set the root password. Okay, that was easy enough. I'm going to check it real quick by using the command. Yeah, okay, it worked. Okay, I'm going to go over the configuration of my Dell XPS 13 with a 256 megabyte or gigabyte uh, hard drive. It's a Lux encrypted logical volume configuration. It's uh, the first 200 megabytes I've got for an EFI partition, 500 megabytes for boot partition, 4 gigabytes for swap partition, 40 gigabytes for a Lux encrypted logical volume for the root, 50 gigabytes for a Lux encrypted logical volume for home, and the remainder I have a Lux encrypted logical volume for virtualization. Okay, we're going to do a FIDO U2F authentication with YubiKey generated one-time passwords for X Windows login. First thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to install all the necessary software. I've got it listed here down below. Optional software. And then you're going to need to add the YubiKey group. Add yourself to the YubiKey group afterwards using the sudo user mod AG YubiKey MJ Watson, which is my username. Program your YubiKey for challenge response on slot 2. Set the current user to require the YubiKey for login. That's that YP, YKPAM CFG command. And then add the following line to your Etsy PAMD GDM password file right below the auth substack password dash auth. And there's the line that you need to add. Okay, we're here. We're going to install the uh, so YubiKey software. Okay, I just typed in my U sudo password. Now it's downloading all the software from uh, uh, Fedora repository. Okay, it looks like everything was okay. Now we're going to install uh, some software, the RPM Dev Tools and the RPM Build. And it's going out and getting it from the repository right now. Now we're going to add the sudo group add yubikey and the sudo user mod a minus g yubikey. And then we're going to add me to the yubikey group. I'm going to check to make sure that I'm in the yubikey group. Now we're going to add a make. We're going to make a directory. It's called uh, Yubico. We're going to set up a couple keys, encryption keys. First command we need to run is where the YK personalization. We're going to set it up to channel 2. We're going to write our. Okay, we've got one of the keys set up, and it wrote a uh, file out in the Yubico in the Yubico no, directory now we're setting up the second Yubikey right. all 
Alright, I'm going to set up one third YubiKey real quick. And they want to go see what, it, go in the Yubico directory and see what it did. Okay, it looks like it wrote the files okay. I'm going to check the second file real quick. Of course, those aren't the actual keys that I just generated. Those are some others. Now we're going to go in and edit the Etsy PAMD, the uh, GDM password file. Okay, as you'll look up there, right below the auth substack password dash auth, we're going to insert a line called auth. Sufficient. Then we're going to list the uh, Yubico module, which is the PAM Yubiki. Or Yubico.so. I'm going to pass an ID to it. Okay, you're done. It's actually set up and we're ready to go. We're going to log out of root. Okay, if you've done any computationally intensive tasks like video editing here lately you've noticed your computer has slowed down. We're going to fix that by temporarily disabling kernel user page table isolation, the Spectre and Meltdown patch. So to check to see if we've got the uh, Spectre and Meltdown patch applied to our computers, pop up a terminal and type in dmessage and then grep it through uh, grep iso and it will should say enabled. Uh, to change that, what we're going to do is we're going to edit the Etsy default grub file and then at the grub command line Linux, we're going to add the no PTI uh, and then we're going to have to regenerate our grub config which will regenerate the nitram disk and then reboot our computer. To reverse the process, you simply reverse this process and take out the no uh, PTI, the no page table isolation. Okay, I've got a terminal up. Now we're going to type in D message and grep for ISO. Okay, we've got kernel user page table isolation enabled, so I'm going to get a root console. Got the root console. Now we're going to edit the Etsy default grub. Okay, we see the uh, grub command line Linux. Now we're going to insert that. No PTI. Hit the escape key, colon, right, quit. Now we need to regenerate the grub config or the init RAM disk. So we'll type in grub2 make config. Okay, we're done. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.